Hi there, I'm Nathan Lane, and you're watching the Broadway.com show. What's wrong with your life? Welcome to the Broadway.com show, our five minute recap of the biggest buzz in town. Or as we like to think of it, Nathan Lane's happy place. Let's get started with the news. What's the buzz, Imogen? Kira Knightley officially made her Broadway debut when Therese Raquin opened at Roundabout Studio 54 this week. The Oscar nominee told us on opening night why she thinks a play, based on the novel by Emile Zola and adapted by Helen Edmondson, speaks to people. When it came out, originally in, I think, 1867, it broke a lot of taboos and it was, it was absolutely shocking. And what's fascinating is the responses from the audience is it, it's almost as shocking today. Oscar winner Forrest Whitaker is getting a hugely talented scene partner for his Broadway debut. Tony winner Frank Wood will co-star in the Eugene O'Neill two-hander Huey. Wood plays a night clerk at a seedy hotel listening to Whitaker's drunken tales of wine, women and gambling glory. It may be a hard look at the dark night of the soul, but with Tony winner Michael Grandage at the helm, it's sure to be a mesmerizing one. The revival begins previews at Broadway's Booth Theatre on February 5th. You might want to sit down, theater buffs, because some big stars are headed off-Broadway early next year. First up, Joshua Jackson and Marshala Ali, who currently star in The Affair and House of Cards respectively, will star alongside Anne Sun and Tessa Thompson in Lydia R. Diamond's Smart People, the play which follows four Harvard grads caught up in a web of social, racial, and sexual politics on the eve of the 2008 presidential election, will open February 11th at the Second Stage Theater. Meanwhile, Stephen Pasquale will star in a roundabout revival of the 1975 musical The Robber Bridegroom. Directed by Alex Timbers, the musical comedy centers on a Robin Hood-like figure who falls for the daughter of a rich plantation owner, and will open on March 13th at the Laura Pels Theatre. We can't wait to see both of these starry shows. Best thing about Thanksgiving? Nope, not the turkey gravy or the stuffing. Not even the sweet potatoes and the sweeter family reunions. The best thing about Thanksgiving is the chance for a free peek at Broadway's hottest shows on the NBC Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. This year, shows fans can see singing and dancing from School of Rock, Fiddler on the Roof, Finding Neverland, The King and I, On Your Feet, Something Rotten, and the cast of the upcoming telecast of The Wiz. Start getting excited and get up early because these performances always happen at the top of the show, which starts at 9 a.m. on Thanksgiving morning. Who is this man? New Zealander Hayden T, who currently appears as Jeva in the Australian production of Les Miserables, will step into the role on the main stem from January the 29th, 2016. He takes over for Earl Carpenter, who is set to play his final performance at the Imperial Theatre on January the 24th, before heading off to lead the Manila engagement. They never shall yield. This week, the gargantuan Broadway blockbuster Wicked celebrated its 5,000th performance on The Great White Way. And to toast to the occasion, the cast and creative team headed to the Palm Restaurant in New York City, where they enjoyed a gravity-defying cake. Of course, Broadway.com photographer Bruce Glickus was on the scene and snapped this week's hot shot of Rachel Tucker and Kara Lindsay, aka Elphaba and Glinda, admiring the confectionery treasure. Wicked is the 11th longest-running Broadway show, but with fans like all of you, we know it'll just keep soaring and soaring. The Broadway comedy Sylvia tells the super sweet story of a long married New York City couple whose lives are shaken up by the arrival of a puppy named, yep, Sylvia. At the opening night bash, I asked the stars, if they were a dog, what would be their go-to trick? Come, sit, stay, because their answers are this week's pop poll. Begging for food. Well, I'm in show business, it's roll over. Rolling over, but not playing dead. Paw, paw, my dog doesn't do paw. Paw. Actually, my dog does paw and then the other paw. Well, sitting, I'd be good at sitting. I would like to be one of those great frisbee dogs. I had a dog who was a good frisbee dog. That always looked like, she loved it. I think she loved it. Or maybe she hated it and felt it had to be done. I was never sure about that. Walk on my hind legs a lot. I love when dogs do that. I think it must be very sort of interesting for them to get a different perspective. I bet I'd be a retriever. My dog does a real good crawl. She's like, crawls on the I never can do it. I try to do it when I sniff, but she's like. Finding the best bed to bunk down in and watch TV. See, I am the owner of Che Guevara, a pug, and I know what his go-to trick is. That's all we're going to have to say about my go-to trick. Well, I, obviously there's roll over and play dead. 
or or just licking my balls. That's, I mean, there you go. That would be my trick, right? Hi, I'm Gideon Glick, and you're watching the Broadway.com show. Broadway is bowing down to the latest monarch to reign over the Great White Way. The Olivier-winning King Charles III earned rave reviews when it opened at the Music Box Theatre this week, with much of the adulation reserved for the future history play's leading man. Tim Pickett-Smith, for your nuanced, regal and masterful performance as King Charles III, we crown you our Star of the Week. Thanks for watching the Broadway.com show. We leave you with a behind the scenes look at Dames at Sea stars Eloise Kropp and Carrie Tedder kicking up their heels for an exclusive and very glam Broadway.com photo shoot with photographer Matthew Murphy. See you next week.